Day shout out time. Birthday shout out time. Birthday shout out. Birthday shout out. Yes sir. Birthday shout out. Birthday shout out. Birthday shout out. Birthday shout out. Good God, yes. Yes sir. Excuse me, I had to dance. I had to give him praise, you know, because he's worthy. Taylor, I pray that you're having the best morning ever. Man, I'm telling you, God is doing some amazing things throughout the land. I'm grateful to be amongst the land of the living. It is a beautiful thing. And as I always say, my bishop, Carolyn, always says, use this quote, that this is the day that the Lord has made. He made this day. God made this day for you and I to be blessed, for you and I to experience his glory, his goodness, all that he has bestowed upon us and our families. The devil did not make this day. God made this day. And guess what, people of God? I'm making an act of my will to choose to rejoice and to be glad therein. God got this thing, man. Everything, anything you walking through, anything you tripping on, anything you dreaming about, anything you in pursuit of, anything you're waiting on, come on, everybody. Anything that you're trusting God to deliver, to bring to your life, anything you're asking God to excuse from your life, he got you. Praise God. That's why you can rejoice when you wake up. Amen. You can rejoice and begin to celebrate his goodness. You can wake up and rejoice and begin to praise him and to yada him and to give him all the glory, the fruit of your lips, and to begin to give him praise. Amen. The Bible says, come on now, that the Lord inhabits the praise of his people. 
So it is, a, it is our obligation as Christians to give him all the glory. Come on, right where you are. Come on, this morning, this afternoon, this evening, whenever you're watching this live feed, come on, just slip your hands up and begin, to, and begin to give him the glory. Amen? Give him the fruit of your lips to say thank you. It's a beautiful thing. Come on, to give praise unto our God. Thank you, Father, for life. Thank you for strength. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you for making 2021 the best year ever of my life. Thank you, Father, for bringing all of 2018, 2019, and 2020 blessings into my life and into my family's life. We'll be ever so quickly to give you the praise, to give you all the glory, and to give you all the honor. Come on now. That wasn't bad at all. Come on, clap where you're at your home, wherever you're sitting watching this telecast. Come on, everybody. Clap for the Lord, give him the fruit of your lips, the fruit of your hands. It is a good thing to give praise unto our God. I am Bishop Jerome Taylor, all the way from the beautiful town of Monk's Corner, South Carolina, all the way here, man. I'm telling you, hey, hit us up. Let us know where you're watching the telecast from. Hey, I got some folk in Philly and in Georgia and Florida and Miami, all over the place. Jacksonville, Duval, I mean all over. Come on. South Carolina, Monk's Corner, the Tri-County area. Let us know where you're watching this live feed from. We appreciate you being tuned in to this telecast. I got some stuff to share with you because we're on that development thing. You know what I mean? 21 things you need to know concerning developing me. I want you to become a better you this year, 2021, so that God can bestow great things upon. I began to think about, as I was traveling here this morning, I began to think about the fact that God wants, you know, I don't think, I know God wants things to develop, and we can think about the fact that the devil doesn't want things to develop. I begin to think about things like an undeveloped seed, like you put a seed, a corn seed in the ground, and that thing comes up with, a, with a, not a full ear of corn, but a half ear of corn, and the rest is rotted. That's undeveloped. That's not the fullness of development, you know what I mean? God wants things to fully develop in our lives, you know what I mean? It is not the will of God for things to become undeveloped. I thought about a child. When a child is born, you know, we understand this, amen, to the totality. Come on. Nobody wants a premature baby. Thank God most of us, some of us were born preemies, and God uh, caused our lives to thrive and to develop, and thank God we're healthy. But most moms want a full-term baby, amen. Nobody wants an undeveloped child, amen. Uh, nobody wants something that's undeveloped. You don't want a child to, 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 to start at age one and not get he'll he'll age but you want that her him or her to develop you know thrive with the years of their lives is there if they're one two year old three year old they're thriving and you see the natural development motor skills and everything developing with that child that's that's beautiful but i begin to think about some of us adults how we don't want to develop come on to how we get stuck sometimes in our ways and we should want to develop. You know, it's, a, it's, a, it's not a beautiful thing to see something undeveloped. So it is, is natural for, us, for, nat for things to develop, a plant, a seed in the ground to develop into what it's, whatever it's going to become. Uh, a person, come on, born from a woman, come on, a beautiful man and a woman, and, and develop into a, a, you know, a, a child and all the, 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 you know, the childhood cycles and youth and growth development that takes place in a child's life. And so development is natural. Come on. I believe it's natural, but I also believe it's spiritual, amen, because God wants us to develop. You shouldn't want to be the same person you were last year, child of God. You should want to become better. I mean, you should want to not to do, do some of the dumb stuff you did last year. I mean, come on, let's say I'm, you know, I'm 52 years of age. I should still be doing the stuff I was doing at age 20. You know what I mean? That, that come, when life comes wisdom, because I believe because we're children of God, the Bible says that if we ask God, come on, the, the, you know, if, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God who give it to all men liberally and upbraided not and it shall be given unto him. So we have the right to ask God for wisdom. And, uh, and I always want to be better than the year before. I want to be better than yesterday. Praise God. I don't want to be the same old dude, you know, when, when y'all met me. Come on, my church family met me 20 years ago. I thank God that my wife did teach me something about uh, being even keel, consistency with my love and stuff like that. And even with that, some people say, Bishop, you really have remained the same in those areas, but I've seen you develop as a man of God. That's a good thing, amen? Because we should get better in the areas that we're good at and then the areas that we're not so good in. Come on, let's let God develop us. Come on, child of God. You know what I'm getting ready to ask you to do? That's right. Come on, hit the share button. Come on, hit the like. Come on, comments. Thumbs up. Give me some smiley faces, some hearts. Let us know. Come on, where you're watching the broadcast from. Also, if you're watching, if you're YouTubing, watching it by YouTube, if you would subscribe, come on, 
Shoot the video to some friends and family. Let them know Connected World of Him broadcast is on the air. These broadcasts are designed to help you to become a better you. Uh, I'll help you to build your faith, starve your doubts. I want your life to become the better when you're watching these telecasts. Not just to see a man up just teaching the word, but there's something supernatural about teaching the word of God. Amen. The Bible said, how should they hear without a preacher? Praise God for the preaching, or they said the foolishness of the preaching of the word of God. Come on. And we should love as believers to learn to have a love for the word of God. Amen. I pray that all my hymn church members, I love y'all out there. Come on, media land out there. Come on, cyberspace. I love y'all, hymn church, and all my family, friends. Hey, come on, near and far. I love y'all, but come on, stay in that word. Stay developing. Stay growing. Stay in your prayer time. Come on, we got prayer manuals. I pray that you're on the March prayer manuals. Don't you let off of that word. Come on, don't you let off of reading your Bible and spending time in that word. That's important because this is your lifeline. Come on, this is how you feed your spirit. And don't let times like these get by you. I know we're not physically yet back in the building. And I'm telling you, I'm seeing a great day for the return of the body of Christ. Now, you know we're going to cut up when we get back up in here. Y'all know we're going to have a good time. You know we're going to cut up the rug. As they would say, we're going to cut the rug. We're going to dance. We're going to shout. Man, we're going to have a blast when we come back to church. And I'm telling you, I'm just so excited that God has given him church a break. Y'all know how long we've been working and grinding and doing things on the campus of this hymn church when God delivered this into our hands in 2004. Come on, everybody. Y'all remember April of 2004, we purchased this facility right here on the beautiful town of Muck's Corner. God gave us a, a mindset to work. We've been working. I mean, and some of you met us working way before 2004, but we've been working, y'all. We've been working and developing this campus and doing all kind of amazing things. And I'm telling you, I didn't know, you know, like every year God has on a project. But I'm telling you what, I believe that the Lord had us working since 2004. Let me back up and say beyond that. Since 1999, we arrived here March 14th. Praise God. We have a church anniversary coming up. And we're going to do something, y'all. We haven't forgot about you. I promise you, you just stick with watching these broadcasts for right now. When is the bishop going to return? When are we going? We ain't coming back to church right now. We're going to come back in a minute. Praise God. Just be patient. I don't want you to be impatient. Let's let this COVID get off the earth. I believe there's a solution. Some of you, you know, fearful of taking a shot. Some of you want to take a shot, don't want to take a shot. You be led of the Holy Ghost what you're going to do. I'm personally going to take the shot. My bishop took the shot. Dr. R.A. Vernon took the shot. My mentor, my bishop mom took the shot. Bishop Carolyn Love. I know we're in a safe place. God got us. Uh, I'm ready for this thing to get off the earth as I shared. If a man went into the lab and created the COVID-19, then a man can go back into the lab to create a solution. Now, we don't get to pick how God wants to heal us. Amen. He can heal us supernaturally or he can give man science, medical science, the solution to get the daggone thing off the earth. Now, I'm not telling God how he's going to do stuff, but I just want you to know that God, I believe there's a solution, come on, in the earth to get this thing off the earth. Amen. I, I don't want, I mean, we don't need another minute of COVID to keep captivating and capturing our lives so that it is hindered uh, to the degree that we need to be blessed. There's some things that God's getting ready to bestow upon us. We're ready for this COVID-19 to go again. Uh, with my hymn church members, I need you to be patient with us. We're going to return to the sanctuary, but not right quite at the moment. I will notify you. I promise you. I will notify you through Gmail. You'll be notified through, you know, of course, email form. This is not Gmail, but through email. You'll be notified uh, through Facebook, all the social media, Twitter. We will let you know. We will get the word out so that you're informed of the return of the church. Now, if you really want to follow, please pay close attention to our YouTube channel also you can go and sus subscribe to subscribe to that or the facebook channel or the facebook feed you can also of course uh connect and, and, and it'll notify you when we're coming on the air anytime i'm doing a live feed but look we're going to come back so don't you get concerned or over worried now some of you are very interested because some of you have moved on we, we, we don't, we're not mad with you if you're going on to reverend Farrell church reverend Foss, uh, frosty snowman come on reverend uh, santa claus then be, be, be mindful to do things right. Send us a letter, let you know that you're no longer a part of the Hymn Church. Uh, it is just my heart to keep you safe right now. I'm, I'm, I'm in all sincerity, you know, I, I'm a true pastor. I, I smell like I smell like sheep, man. I ain't trying to bring you in prematurely to, to do nothing to harm your family, you know. Uh, if anything, you know, you, I think some of you need to celebrate that your bishop is not money hungry. He's not driven by, you know, by ego. Come on, to be in here just to preach, just to have people to preach to, a, a paid off facility. How many pastors would love to be in the, hey, come on, to be in the spot that we're in? 
that God has created, and yo, you know your pastor ain't on no ego trip. Come on now. I want to keep God's people safe in the name of Jesus. I really mean that with all my thousand percent heart. I want to keep you safe right now. And safety is is the word is 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 like the, the word of the day for me, for you. Because it's important for you to be safe and your family to be safe. I don't want us coming here and we all catching COVID and possibly dealing with some, you know, uh, 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 you know, uh, a point of death with this thing. And it's, you know, of course, we know this thing have taken many people out. Many people have died because of COVID-19. And I can't put, I can't have that on my watch. A, not, not my watch. I can't have that. So on the margin of error, whatever, if I'm in, if I'm in, and God will speak to him. I promise you, if God speak to him and tell me what to do, I'm going to do it. But I really believe right now still we're not supposed to come back. So don't be, don't be uh, weary by that. Let's just keep tuning in. In your PJs, how cool is that? In your PJs, <laughs> come on. In your gowns or whatever, you know, your robes, chilling at home, whatever. Just chilling and getting the word, wherever you are. I think it's pretty cool. Just make sure you make a commitment to get the word of God on Sunday morning, also on Throwback Tuesdays, until we tell you differently, amen? Again, you know, I think some people don't have appreciation for when the doors were open. Come on now. Some people took for granted when the doors of the church were open, you know? And sometimes we had so many excuses of why we couldn't be here. I'm not saying you, come on, but I'm saying some people in the community, not just with him church, but with churches all over America. Some people took for granted that churches were over. I get to church next week. I'm tired. I'm this, I'm that. I got to work. You know, it is what it is. Now the church door's not open. Now everybody want to get here. Isn't that amazing? But I'm telling you what, God still got us. Amen. We are the church. This is the physical, the physical assembly of the church where we come together to get the word. And do I miss it? Oh, my goodness, do I miss it. Do I miss it? Not it. I miss the people. I am a, I am a colonial pastor. I love fellowship, and I love touching my people. I love hugging my sons and daughters. Come on. I love touching. I mean, when I say touch, I love, amen, just hugging and loving on God's people. That's what it's all about to me, and let them know how important they are. But I just want you to connect with me, amen, through this telecast. Stick with us. Don't leave. Come on, stay on the path. Return your tithe. Give offerings. Stay tuned in. Read your prayers. Come on, read your Bible. Do the right things in the community. Stay focused. Come on now, just do the right thing until we gather again. We're going to come back again. COVID-19 is not going to stay on the earth forever. Somebody said there's a second strand now. Well, we bind that strand in the name of Jesus too. You know, isn't it amazing? The people, oh, there's a second strand. It really make you think somebody in the lab plan. Oh, this strand was not weak. This, this strand was not strong enough. Let's go back and create strand number two. The devil is a liar. Come on now. Make you just think somebody's around here playing with people's lives. And, uh, and the joke is not on, the joke, the joke is going to be on them. Praise God. I believe whatever evil people are launching to hurt other people, it's going to come back not only in their lives, but even upon their family and their children's children. Come on now. God is in control of the life of the believer. All right, everybody. Come on, let's get back on our points. I pray that you enjoyed last week. This week, again, I want to go off on some points and get you stirred up about developing you. I, I'm telling you what, I am so committed to making sure that my life is the better for everybody. You know, I believe when you become the better, everything around you changes. Come on. When you work on me, we are affected. Come on. That's how that works. Got it? When me is worked on, we are affected. Come on. It affects we. And you turn the letters, you know, in the word me is M-E. But if you flip the M, it returns, it turns to a W. And then it has a W-E. Amen? So when you start flipping stuff in your life, come on and get off of that me thing, you're going to have a we. It's going to be a better we all day long. And sometimes we have such a focus on ourselves, but you should have a self-focus to develop yourself. But when you're developing yourself, and that's not a bad focus to have a self-focus, but when you're focusing on yourself to develop yourself, it's going to turn it into a beautiful we. And everybody's going to be impacted by your development. That's a good thing because you want to be the best you. You want, you want to become a better version of yourself every year. Every, every week, if you can become a better version of yourself, that's what you want. Isn't it as amazing? That you don't want the, uh, y'all remember the Curtis Mathis TVs, those in Jacksonville, Florida. I don't know about the, uh, the Tri-County. I didn't grow up here. But we remember Curtis Mathis was one of our uh, vendors in Jacksonville, Florida. Zenith, I don't know if some of y'all know about the Zenith televisions back in the days. RCA's been around for a minute. Y'all remember, remember the box TVs with the, uh, the stereos inside of them? I forget what they call them. The units with the TV, the floor models. I forget what they call them. Floor unit TVs with all that stuff in it. The 45 with the... Uh, Eight tracking and all that. Y'all remember that? Some of y'all remember that? Come on. If you remember that, come on, hit me with a thumbs up or with a smiley face. Some of y'all too young to remember that they had these uh, floor model TVs. And they had a TV in it, eight track, I mean, radio system, all that stuff. Boy, you talking about people wanted that thing in their home, and most people had those 
uh, particular boxes in their homes with TV, a stereo set to the side, all that stuff, like a whole unit. Hey, right, you know, tomorrow. This was was crazy about that, right? As awesome as that was back in the days with the TV in it, with the 8-track, come on with the 40, with the uh, with LP, play the 45s or the LP, long, they call it long play of the, of the uh, what do you call it, uh, of the turntable and all that stuff, radios on and all that good stuff. You know what? Nobody's thinking about that no more. And then some people, you sit in their house, is outdated, and it's probably, you know, collecting dust or whatever, and some people, it still works. Matter of fact, my mom and dad had theirs for years when they worked together. That thing worked. I mean, it was loud. It was a very nice uh, 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 stereo system and, and, and TV. But I'm telling you what, people of God, nobody's trying to get that in their homes anymore. You know what people trying to get now? Flat screens, 4Ks, the, 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 uh, the, all the, the latest model stuff. All the latest flat screen, the bending TVs. Some people trying to get the 80 inch, 90 inch. You know what I mean? They try. Some people trying to get the 200 inch. How would you like a 200 inch television on your on your on your wall? Some people trying to. Some people say, forget about that, bitch. I want me a dag on projector. I want me a whole studio. I want me a whole a dag on you know a, a cinema in my in my in my in my home. Nothing wrong with those desires. You never try to go back to capture the TVs that were built in 1979. 1976. Come on now. You understand what I'm saying? Things, what am I saying? Things develop over the years. And guess what we want? The latest development. The latest, what we call model. We want the latest model of the current development of whatever is the latest technology. Nobody wants old stuff. Nobody, you know, it's not wrong with vintage stuff because some people like vintage stuff. Vintage stuff. Old cars, stuff. My dad is into that. All right. But I mean, some people love the latest model, man. It's nothing like new models, nothing like a new phone. Y'all, come on now, hit the share button. Y'all know what I'm saying. It's nothing like the latest. But it happens to somebody who's in a lab developing what's next for society. And you got to understand, your life can't be stuck on 1969, 1949, 1959, 1999. Come on now, your life as a person, you have to almost evolve with the time. Come on now. You have to evolve and want to evolve and be current. Some, 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 matter of fact, years ago, I remember uh, in our church, we had some seniors that was on our leadership team, uh, and they were kind of all, you know, in fog about texting, because I told them, that this year, I don't want nobody to physically call me. If you want to talk to the bishop, you got to text me. So some of our seniors today in the church do text because I forced them to text. Come on now, I forced them. I had a friend of mine, very popular man of God that loved me, and I love him too. Uh, matter of fact, he, he, you know, much of a talker, and I was saying, no, man, if you want to talk to me, you got to text. But he thanks me to this day that I forced him to text. Now he loves it. I mean, he, that's all he does is text now. You know what I mean? So sometimes we have to not be afraid of, of uh, grabbing hold. Somebody texted me the first time. I was like, I don't want to fool with this. The reason I want to fool with it is because I didn't know how to do it. And then I found out it was so easy, and I got my Blackberry, the Crackberry, back in the days we called the Crackberry. Man, I went to text it. I went, I started loving it. You know what I mean? Just enjoying the whole, uh, uh, the new form of communication, if you will, through the form of texting. Some people, very uh, uh, very old school, they feel like, oh, texting is impersonable. Well, guess what? If I say hello physically, if I say hello to a text, it's, it's, to me it's hello. You, you see what I'm saying? Some people love physical talk. Some people don't like talking on a, uh, uh, talking through text. Some people love just texting, uh, excuse me, physically talking, and that's fine. Whatever you love, you love. It don't matter to me if you physically call me. I'd rather you text me and say hello. Go, we can get to the point. You know what I mean? I'm a very busy man. Uh, I know everybody got a life. I can multitask through texting. I can be talking to two people at one time, three people. Uh, let's get to the point. Let's not keep each other on the phone for three hours, then get to the point. Come on now. I mean, you know, if 12 people consume one, my, one hour of a day with me, that's 12 my hours of day. If 24 people consume an hour of my time, that's my whole entire day. Come on now. It gets crazy like that as pastors. Y'all can relate. Some people that got busy lives, if you're on the phone with people like that, you can, you can understand that. But, I'm, but here's my point. Over the years, things have developed, people, and we cannot as people, come on now, you got a smartphone, but you still dumb. In other words, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not saying dumb, but like you still acting crazy and you don't want to develop, you don't want to do better, you don't want to do nothing but just sit there and be stuck on stupid. Smartphone, and <laughs> you acting dumb on it, you know what I mean? Come on now, I mean, you got to want to develop with things. I'm not saying, you know, you know, I'm not calling you dumb, but my point is, you have to want to develop. It's, it, it, it's something that you have to yearn. It has to be something that you want. You shouldn't want to get stuck. That's why I believe, again, 
Uh, thank you, Archbishop Leonard Love and Bishop Carolyn Love. Marriages fail because people don't want to develop. You don't come into a marriage knowing everything about that person. I mean, you may know as much as you need to know to connect with them, but you know, find out as much as you can when you're, when you're not married. But at the same time, you have to keep evolving in that marriage. Come on now. Keep developing into a better me so we can have a better we. Marriages get stuck because somebody, somebody don't want to develop. Somebody don't want to grow. Got it? There's some growth that stops. And so, therefore, you know, everybody just take it down the court, uh, you know, don't want to love each other no more, don't want to work through things. Man, marriage is for grown folk. Children need not to apply. That's big boy, big girl stuff. For real, for real. You know what I mean? And most marriages don't make it because people don't want to continue to develop. You know what I mean? People don't want to do right. Don't They want to, you know, do their thing and not be committed to the, the process of marriage and the commitment. Because marriage takes commitment. Marriage takes commitment. Being faithful to one man, being faithful to one woman, keeping your eyes on that one man and that one woman and working through all your issues, whether it be financial or via financial, whether it be via, come on, spiritual, whether it be via sex, whether it be via, uh, you know what I mean, uh, planning and learning to dream. Some of you frustrated with your spouse for all kinds of reasons. It takes development if you're going to stay married. I'm telling you, 30 years being with my one wife, it kept constantly. My wife, of course, you know, Pastor T was just a, 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 an amazing individual, and that girl stayed dreaming and thinking about 20 years ahead of herself, you know what I mean? And I could not <laughs> just sit there and let her be thinking about 30 years of life, and I'm around here still stuck on 1988 or 1992 when we got married. I mean, she really helped me to dream, come on, to be inspired, to do better, to be a better person. I always hook up with somebody who's going to bring out the best of you and not the beast in you. Come on. Somebody who's going to bring out a better you. Between beast, between better and bitter, of course, is one letter, I and the E. You want somebody who's going to bring out the best in you or, or cause you to become better, not bitter. Amen? That's what I'm going to say, better, not bitter. And then you want them to bring out the best in you, not the beast in you. Amen? You want them to touch a spot where you want to develop. Come on, y'all. Hit the share button. Let's get to some of these points. I'm just going on because I want you to become better. Marriages, you got to want to have a better marriage. You got to want to become a better dad. If you're a father, man, guess what? All my money being sucked up. Man, hush and be quiet. Come on, man. Be quiet, man. You, you, you signed up for it. Come on. You, you laid down with that woman and had them babies. Be quiet. Let's, 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 let's man up. Come on. Woman, be quiet. Come on, woman. Clean the house and cook for that man. Hush. <laughs> hush. Come on. Come on, hush. Hush. Somebody's calling your name. Hush. Come on, grow up. Be quiet. Come on. You didn't, you signed up to be, come on, a wife. If you signed up to be a husband, then come on and do what you got to do. Put on your big boy pants and your big girl clothes, and let's get this thing moving. Because everybody going to be impacted. And everybody don't feel like doing a whole lot of stuff. Guess what? You did. When you sign up for marriage, baby, you lost your rights right then. Seriously. Ma'am, sir, you lost your rights. Don't be complaining about going making money for your family. Go get the cheddar. Go get the cabbage, the cheese, whatever they call it. Go get that money and come and bless your family and be a good man to your family. Don't be complaining. Nobody want to hear about the belly pains. Oh, that job, them people like, you don't know what I go through. Hush. Hush your nose and go make the money. Nobody want to hear about that. You a man. Go make that money. Go go get your hands rough up, whatever. Do what you got to do for your family. I don't want to I don't want to be around here uh, taking no minimum wage. Man, go do what you got to do for your family. I'm just saying. You talking about you want to start from the bottom. Where else are you going to start? Some of you ain't got the educational background to start at the daggone level 5 or 10 because you dropped out of high school or you dropped out of college. I'm just saying, don't, don't just hush. You know, come on, don't, don't quit. Don't, don't blame the world for your undevelopment. I'm just saying. So, so let's, not, let's not try to punish our families because you got it hard. No, you can make it as easy as you want to. I mean, come on, life takes, life is about maintenance. We'll talk about that another time. It takes maintenance. Come on. And you can't blame everybody for your undevelopment. Come on now. I mean, and you just got to just man up. You know, nobody know what it's like being a wife, being home, taking care of these kids. Hush. <laughs> Be quiet. Sign up. You signed up for it. You signed up. He looked fine. He was cute. So y'all hook up and y'all got to start having kids. Now y'all on babies. Now you don't want to be no mama. You can't go to the club. <laughs> you know what I mean? Y'all can't be trying to go to the club, the dog track. You're a mama and a daddy now. You understand what I'm saying? Fun is, you can have fun. But guess what? I ain't really get a chance to enjoy myself while I was young. Nobody told me to lay down and have a baby either. I'm just saying now, because sometimes, you know, we want to blame 
everybody except for ourselves for taking the responsibility for our actions. You got to take full responsibility for your actions. Come on now. See, we don't want to do that. We want to blame everybody else. But he knew I was, no, nah, you got to, both of y'all got it. Y'all had entanglement, whatever. That's what Jada called it, entanglement. Y'all had entanglement, so deal with the consequence. I'm not being hard. I'm just saying, we need to just be quiet and deal and learn how to get through these things. Because again, if you're trying to blame somebody else for where you are, you'll never get to where you need to be. You'll sit there and blame somebody forever and say, you know what, I got to take responsibility. You know, I was also a part of this, this mess or whatever. I, 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 you know, nobody had a gun in my head. I participated and engaged with the situation, so I got to take, take some responsibility. And you can't just throw it on somebody else unless your circumstance was beyond you being able to make a decision. So here's the point I want to I wanna start back on. I believe we left off on point number eight. I don't know. Uh, you know, Ms. Buster, so we'll, we'll go ahead. You said yes. Okay, so we will start back on point number eight, which is powerful. We're in this vein. That point number eight states this, staying with the commitment is an act of your will. So when you're being committed to developing you, you got to stay with it. And you can't abandon the process. You know what I mean? Uh, point eight, point seven, just to hit on it and to come back on eight, making the commitment is an act of your will, but staying, point eight, staying with the commitment is an act of your will too. Making the commitment, I'm going to make a commitment, but staying with the commitment. Oh my goodness, I know that so, so well. You know, we, I mean like really, you got to stay with the commitment. You got to stay with the commitment to being developed. You got to stay in the, you know, if you're going to gym, God help us all. Come on, gym, those that are trying to work that thing out with their weight trying to stay with it, come on the process. You know the challenge of trying to stay at a certain size and stay with a certain diet. Come on, eat and be disciplined. Guess what? You got to stick with it. Cause it'll, it'll work. It'll work. I've seen the weight come off me pre-COVID. Come on. Uh, saw it come back on during COVID. Come on, still working on it to get back off me. I, I saw it because I stuck with a plan that one of my sons gave me, who was a professional bodybuilder, and, and it worked. So, again, I'm learning this. The Lord always tells me, he says, son, you, 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 uh, if you, you know how to get to the, to, the, to the finish line of what you're doing, and most of us know too, but some of us don't like following the instructions. I'm a very instructional type of follower guy, but there's some things that takes discipline, like working out. There's some things that take discipline, like, you know what, I'm going to develop myself by reading the Word. I'm going to make sure I'm praying an hour a day. I'm going to make sure that I treat you. Come on, there's some things it's going to take that's going to eat at your flesh that your flesh may not like. You got it? There's some things... You know, when people cuss you out and you, 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 don't, you, you feel like if I say something, if I say one cuss word about it, I feel better. <laughs> okay, so, well, some, somebody knows what I'm saying. I just want to cuss one time. I just want to get all this out. I just want to get all this off my chest. I feel better because I feel like they don't punk me. You know what I mean? And you feel like cussing them back will do better. And God said, no, just, just tell them God bless you. You're like, no, God, I, don't, I feel like I'm being punked out. And that thing be turning in your head. And be turning in your head. You just feel like giving them one good old, because they don't remember you as a sailor. See, they remember you as, 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 a, as a Christian. See, they, they don't remember you as a cussing sailor. See, you would cuss somebody out and make them go jump off a, 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 a piece of limb or something. You know what I mean? That's how bad you, 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 know, you, you used to know how to cuss people out. But I'm just saying, you know what I mean? You make somebody want to go hit themselves in the head because you know how to cuss that good. But now God said, I want you to develop. When people bother you like that, you don't even say nothing back to them. Boy, that takes a lot of discipline, doesn't it? When somebody just wrong you and you, God tell you don't say a word. Oh man, that's tough. That that that's tough. That's tough for real. Some somebody doing you wrong, don't say nothing to them. You, you know what I'm saying? Your husband treating you bad, but get up and make him breakfast anyway. Uh huh. That wife treating you bad, but go go give it a whole check when you come home. Uh huh. When somebody just done did you wrong, you know they done went and talked behind your back. Come on, sat at your kitchen table, ate up all your food, every holiday over to your house, and then your best friend turned their back on you. That hurts. And God said, don't say nothing about them. Don't scandal the name. They got your name all on Facebook. Got you, you know, scan, you know, doing all kind of scandalous stuff to, to, to drag your name. Come on, defaming your name. You know what I mean? And you had these folk at your kitchen table, and they were like family to you. And they act like you never done nothing for them. Oh, that hurts. And for God to say, don't say nothing to them. Just, just pray. Just pray over them. And just pray for them. Oh, man. You don't want to do that. You want to take matters, come on, into your own hands. So with point A, stand with the commitment is an act of your will. See, life is choice-driven. We live or die by the choices that we make. 
We have a will to want to do or not to do. It's your will to serve the Lord or not to serve the Lord. He didn't make us, he made us what we call free moral agents, right? That means that you have a will to do or to not to do. He, you're not a robot. Come on now. Thank God he didn't make us robots. Praise me. Yes, Lord, we will praise you. Jump up and down. Yes, Lord, we will jump up and down. No, he didn't make us like that. I mean, you go to, you go to, you do all kinds of stuff with your will. Your will can lead you to a bad place or it can lead you to a good place. But we have to learn that at this point, when you're making a commitment, you got to stay with it, man. You got to stay with it. I'm learning this too. The stick, the stick with something to stay with it. You may not see the results right then. You may not see the results tomorrow. You may not see the results in a week or two weeks or a month. But let me tell you something, man or woman of God. You stick with it long enough, results coming. See, there's some principles things. You save $20 a week, come on, $100 a month. It may not seem like a whole lot. You just keep stacking that $100 away every month and watch what happens at the end of the year. And you just keep on stacking that $20 that seemed to be insignificant. Come on now, or that $200, whatever you got, just put it away and not... Think, you know, it's almost like some jobs have the program where they draft the money out. You just have that money drafted like $100 a month or $100 a week and just turn your back on it. Oh, baby, it may look insignificant on the beginning. And you take that same principle, come on, and start paying on your bills. Let me just hit my bills up because some of you run from the people and don't want to call them and deal with it. You are like a little child. You running from your credit like they some big monster. Sometimes you got to deal with stuff head on. Come on now. Developing yourself means... I want a good credit score. I want an 800 something. So I gotta, I gotta be a man. I can't be no little girl, no little boy running for my creditors. If I owe the people, let me pay them. Come on, it's okay. I got in the jam. My card backed up. Whatever. I'm, I want to get out of this debt. Some of you run from them because you're scared. You're scared. Somebody call your phone. You running like a grown. You, you a grown man running. You a track star. You running. Come on, man. Nobody got time for that. Let's pick up the phone, talk to them, have a conversation, and be straight with them. Ma'am, sir, I can only send you five dollars a month. That's all I can see right now. What are they going to tell you? No. They're going to accept it because they're going to try to work a deal because they want their money. So you got to understand, even with that kind of development, like, man, I'm not going to run from stuff. If I made the mess, I'm going to go, I'm going to get myself out of the mess. I'm going to develop my mind not to be running from my problems. Some of you run too much. Some of you run from your problems because you're not developed. You need development in that area. Some of you, oh, you run from too many things. Some of you just debt freak you out. Some of you don't have no discipline with money. I don't know why I'm over here. Some of you have no discipline. Not that you don't make the money, you have no discipline. You just get the money, just go fool. You get money, just go fool. And you ain't happy till it's all gone. Till your pockets pulling lint up out of it. You know what I mean? And so you get money, you don't know how to just discipline yourself. Like if my bill's $1,000 a month, every pay period, I'm going to take out $200 or whatever, $250, divide that $1,000 by, by, by my pay periods, take that money, I put it to the side, put it in an envelope, put it somewhere in the house so that I have the man's money. Not you. <laughs> shoes look shoes look glamorous. Clothes look too glamorous. And you got too many clothes as it is now. I'm just saying, come on, y'all. Hit the show. Don't get mad with the bishop. I'm just saying, some of you just got too much stuff going on. And you don't know how to discipline yourself to develop yourself to be in a place where you are. Again, it's not the money. You don't know how to manage the money. You misman what they call mismanage the money. Money is to be made, is to be made, uh, excuse me, is to be made, managed, and then multiply. Some of you don't have a, some of you, it's not that you don't make the money, you get too many things going. When you get a little pay raise, you always jump into what's next. You, sometimes you can't jump into a new car. Yeah, unless, you know, the old car messing up, that's fine. You need good transportation. If your old car ain't messing up, not a car raggedy. No, the car ain't raggedy. You just want a new one because everybody else got one. You might need to hold on to that car for a minute, ride it, not until the wheels fall off, but, you know, ride it until you just, you know, not that anything's wrong with it, but you might can't upgrade as fast as other people. Don't worry about other folk, first of all. Get your mind and heart off of everybody else. Come on now. We ain't trying to keep up with the Joneses. Come on, the Smiths, <laughs> the Mitchells, whatever. We ain't trying to keep up with God. So you got to keep your eyes off of folk and don't feel like you insignificant because you don't have the latest. You'll get it, but it might not be time. And that takes development because I remember time me and Pastor C, man, it's like, come on, man. It's like dreaming of a new car. Oh, my God. We used to dream of driving a new car. Like, Lord, how does it feel to even smell the seats on that thing? I'm so serious. We just had to the point, we just kept dreaming. We didn't give up on our dreams. We'll see people, these nice, you know, Hondas, of course, was our cars back in the day, looking at somebody riding a nice Honda Civic, nice Honda Accord, I mean, a nice Cadillac, you know, a nice, oh, just a, just a nice car. And we would just sit there like we'd looking and longing, like, God, one day, 
one day. None of our, both of our credit was not even strong enough to go pull it. And even me being a man of my home, being married to this woman, I couldn't pull it on my own, which was sad. Come on now. And some of you want to marry these women, don't want, you want to put their name, put your name on them, but your name can't pull uh, 50 cent uh, credit. I'm just saying now, if, you gotta, if you're a man, your name needs to be able to pull your family through some things. If you couldn't get it with cash, then your name still is strong enough so that you can obtain the things that you need. Some of you messed up your name because you don't want to develop in that area. You don't want to, nobody telling you what to do. You feel like it's your money. First of all, some of you ain't tithing back to God. That's another story. Then you want to just, you know, of course, not give God his portion. Then you want him to bless the whole 100%. And then you don't realize you got a curse on your life because nothing's jail and nothing working. I'm just saying hit the share button for everybody because we don't want to develop. We don't to tell us what to do. Somebody's going to tell you what to do. Come on now. Somebody, you got to learn to understand. Somebody's going to, uh, you got to listen to somebody. Come on, praise God. So so, so I want to get off this point because I know some of you ain't liking me right now. Hit the share button. I still love you, though. Hit the share button. I love you. I do. I love you. I, I really love you because I want you, to, I want you to be, I want you to feel that thing like, man, Bishop is all on my toes. He on my corns, yes. He on my bunions, yes. I want you to get so upset in a good way and start making change. Like, man, I heard about that debt. That thing stung me, man, because I, I need to get out of debt, and I know I need to develop in this area. Some of you, some of you got to have the difference. It's, 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 not, it's not that complicated. Don't let, money, don't let money handle you. You handle money, praise God. No, 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 don't be moved by it. You just learn how to use wisdom. You can't go spend everything. Just put it like that. There's a portion to spend. There's a portion. Come on, we got stuff. We did years for a, a, a budgeting breakdown. Some people think budget is a curse word. Come on, it's, it's, you got you to you save some, you got to spend some, and you got to make sure you're paying your bills. Make sure you keep your name clean. Make sure you're paying your stuff on time. All that helps your, your credit rating to be great. You got it? And some of you just got stuff on your credit. You wait seven years for everything to fall off. Come on. You done calculated 21 years. Somebody's like, going to fall off when I'm 55. Man, come on. For real? Girl, for real? You wait seven years for something to fall off, you go pay it off? For real? For real. No, no, for real. And it's going to cause you to get the 15, 18, 20, 35% interest. And you have been on paper that thing like 20 times. Instead of just going and calling the people and saying, look, I made a debt at $700. I got $200. Can I send you that in? It can be called a date. Negotiate is what it's called. Or can I send you a few payments and pay this thing off? Can we get down to $300? You negotiate with them. It's already on the credit report. Amen. It's already there saying, you, you know, your credit report that says, to people that you don't pay your bills or you you tell people stuff you don't come through or you say something but you don't really mean it see your credit report is revealed to your character it says that you need character development they tell it tell people basically what they'll do they'll make a deal with you but they won't come through see it tells people that they don't keep their word it tells people that don't trust them because we all we they don't they done jacked us up over here <laughs> we all jacked up trying to get our money from them now that's why they put on the credit report because they're going to notify everybody else, don't trust them. Mm. Hit the share button, everybody. Somebody ain't liking this in, in TV land today. Ooh, Jesus. Come on now. You round here grown two times. Tell my, can you co-sign for me? Sit down. Don't nobody co signing for your behind. I'm just saying. Parents, don't get upset with me. I ain't co-signing for none of my kids. They're going to have to make it on their own. Now, my wife, I give her this. She wanted to do it for, 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 for some of my kids, all of them. I said, baby, I ain't co-signing it. I ain't put my name on it. I love, I love all three of them girls. I ain't put my name on it. Now, I might do it for my grandbaby. No, I'm joking. But anyway, I ain't co-signing it for nobody. Hey, man, I love a little grandbaby. I'm just saying. My grandbaby, ain't, ain't she, she don't know nothing about no cars. Right now. I'm just saying. She's recently born in January. I'm just saying. Well, bitches, they need, I'm just saying. The Bible says don't co-sign, go, don't co-sign for nobody. That's what the Bible says. Now, you, you, if you want to be bigger than the Bible, then go for it. But that's why some of you are in the predicament you're in because you're always trying to overemphasize and over, over, overthink things and go way beyond what the Bible says. The Bible says co-sign for nobody. That's what the Bible says. Don't co-sign for nobody. If your name ain't strong enough to carry, don't try to get mine and drag mine in the mud and mess my name up. Because you know what? When it's good, oh, I'm going to pay it. I'm going to pay it. I just need somebody. I need somebody just co because your name ain't strong enough to carry it because you don't. You don't promise everybody, and you know, you know, when you get a co-sign, I mean, they halfway trust you, but they need somebody else to carry you. Nah, you, you need to just learn how to just get things on your own, so you need to be a big boy, a big girl. Come on. And then some of you husbands, your wife carrying the whole family, that's, that's plumber diddle. 
You, your name is on the family, but your wife carrying you. What kind of foolishness is that? You can't, I'm just saying hit the share button. I'm just saying you can't go get your wife a nice home because your credit ain't good enough. Nobody trusts you. Your wife around here longing for a house. Only thing she wants is a nice house. This, this, not, that, you know, this is something that she can call her own, feel good and, as a woman. You can't even pull that off. You can't pull that off as a man because you didn't keep your words with the things along the way and all the credit cards and all the things you got. You thought it was a game, spinning wheels that they had to come and repossess. You now you ain't on twenty fours to nobody. You know what I mean? Now you you catching a ride or whatever the case may be. Can't go get a car for your family, a home, or nothing. Can't get no credit on debt, credit on uh, furniture on credit, or nothing. I'm just saying. Nobody trusts you because there is some lack of development there. Oh, my God. Hit the share button, everybody. I don't know why Bishop going off on this stuff. And I pray that I'm making you mad to go do something about it. Don't just go popping off at the mouth, but go do something about it. Your whole family, depending on you as a man, you can't carry your whole family with your name. I ain't, I'm talking about with your name. Your name should be strong enough to walk into a, a, a furniture store, get furniture. Your name should be strong enough, come on, to walk on a car lot, get a car for your family. Your name should be strong enough, come on, to go to the housing, uh, wherever, come on, a bank, and get a house for your family, no problem. If you don't want a house, it should be able to be strong enough to rent because everything is about your name these days. You can't just go and, and rent and do nothing without somebody saying, can we pull up your credit report? Y'all know the deal. How strong is your credit? It's going to be based on what you can do. Because most of us don't have 30, 40, 50, 60, $100,000, 200, 300 million dollars sitting in the bank. Most of us don't. Got it? So now your name got to become that strong. The Bible says a good name is rather to be chosen than silver or gold. Don't go chasing the silver or the gold, the Bible says. Chase having a good name. So guess what? If you owe somebody, pay them. Don't look at it as a, as a negative. I'm going to just pay my bills and keep my name good because if I need something, my name going to pull it off. I mean, you know, Jesus and you going to pull it off, mostly him. I'm just saying. You know what I mean? We want to call on the name of Jesus. His name good. Can people call on your name? I mean, can you come through? That's why we like the name of Jesus because that's the name above all names. But see, nobody can call on your name and your name ain't pulling nothing off. And your name should be strong, vibrant, especially for your family. Because you don't know what you may need. And then you would always learn to appreciate paying your bills. That's character development. Mm -hmm. that's, that's character development. I'm going to do what I say. If I make a promise to my family, I'm going to come through. If I tell my wife I'm going to take out the dinner Friday night, I'm going to take out the dinner. If I tell my husband, come on, I'm going to give him some Friday night, make him real happy. <laughs> come on, hit the share button. I'm just saying, if we will have a nice romantic evening, then woman, do what you got to do. I'm just saying, or vice versa. Come on, <clears throat> or, or come on. If you, if you share with him, I'm honey. I'm have your dinner. Your nice greens and collard green neck bones and some fried chicken and some rice, <clears throat> red rice, and I'm have some fish to the side, corn, cornbread, black eyed peas. Come on, Hoppin' John, and I'm have some okra, ready for you on Sunday, baby. Well, you better make sure that meal ready for that man. <coughs> Come on now, make sure that meal is ready because you made a word and you gave your husband his word. Sometimes we take people for granted. Come on now. Well, I'm tired. I, I know I said it, but no, no, no. You get up and you come on, you, you start working on that thing Saturday night because your word has to mean something to you. See, when people don't give, when people give you their word and they back up, that means they got character development. We all got, we all got areas where we can tweak, y'all. Come on, hit the share button, everybody. Staying committed to developing yourself. It's so, oh, it's so critical. It's so critical. Oh, I'm going to pay you, sir. I'm going to pay you on the first of the month. And you, come on now, you can't even keep that word. I know sometimes we get your check, like, oh, bitch, my check, I just want to look at it in the bank for a minute before I start giving it out. And I just, I know what it looks like when, when you, that thing look like it's, when, when you're deceiving yourself and it look like you had that much. And you know your thing will get cut up like six ways, like eight ways, like a pizza in a minute. You know what I mean? But don't, 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 don't feel bad because I shared something last week. Be excited that God gave you the money to pay your bills. Don't, don't get upset that you got to pay bills. Be excited that I have the money to pay my bills. I don't have a whole lot right now. I'm just saving fifty dollars a month. Whatever. I got fifty dollars myself. You mad and angry? You know, a couple things you can do: go get another job, better yourself, or cut back on some spending. You know, cut back on some things you're doing. Come on now, some some things. Some some of us got bad habits, from cigarettes to beer to liquor to all kind of stuff. Come on, video games. Some of you don't need to watch. Some of you need cable. You can't afford it. You can afford it, but you don't need it. 
You don't need it. You don't need it. Two hundred dollars a month. You, you you need to cut it off. Come on, pay pay somebody with that two hundred dollars. You know, catch something on the YouTube or something. Get go to the free channels. You, you, I'm just saying, if you can't afford it, don't be trying to be out here with the big boys and the big girls. Now now now, some of you got these cell phones. That's interesting too, because some of you got two cell phones, and that, that's interesting. I'm just saying, that that's another story. And you paying for that, you ain't gonna get that cut off. I promise you, the cell phone will get cut off. That's a whole other story, right? But for the most part, all those uh, special amenities like uh, Wi-Fi, are like uh, you know, I, I know Wi-Fi you need it for whatever. That's, that's that can be critical in this day and time. At least you don't have to have cable. Cable is you know it's optional. You don't need no satellite this satellite with seven eight hundred channels. I mean, really? And when you when you owe people, see, you can't you can't live like like a king or a queen, which you are a beautiful king and a queen, but you can't live like this when you owe everybody. You know what I mean? You got to get your bills. Man, you got to live at a level where you ain't trying to please everybody. There's got to be some form of sacrifice so that people, everything that you owe can be caught up and paid. Now, if you don't owe nobody, I mean, enjoy yourself. You know what I mean? I work hard. And when you work hard, you should play hard. That's what I believe. That's my motto. Work hard, play hard. But, I mean, don't play hard when you owe everybody, though. You got it? When everybody's seeking and, and searching for their money. I'm just saying. Praise God. Amen? Come on, everybody. Hit the share button. Man, I don't know. I've been stuck over here blowing too many fuses on this one thing. And some of you, I, I'm just going to trust God that you need to hear what you need to hear. Let me go to point nine. I'm trying to, Lord, get off this point number eight. I mean, some of you just need to hear that. Come on now, because that, that debt piece is a whole other piece. We just need a series of lessons on that thing. Managing money. Because Man, that's character development. That means that there's a there's a deficiency or the default in most of our character when it comes to money. Some of you owe people money, and you won't pay them back. Some people, some of you have broken friendships, beautiful friendships, because you won't simply pay people their money back. Somebody did you a favor, and you won't, you won't acknowledge it. Now you're breaking the friendship. But the real deal is you don't want to pay them back. Now you're going to be mad at the people, dodge them, and act like they don't exist. Man, get out of town. Ma'am, get out of town. Pay them people their money back. Quit playing. Somebody got to run you down for, for, for you to pay them their money back. I right, man, y'all be, I, I could call off four or five celebrities that have been in this church, so to speak. You know what I mean? That got serious character issues financially. Serious. Serious. See, some of you need to follow your bishop. Let me say this. Some of you need to follow your bishop. What do I mean by that? If I got people coming to this church, you'll see me riding and following with them. You need to let that need to be a signal to you. I'm just saying now. I don't try to blast nobody. I don't try to beat nobody up. You don't never hear me up here preaching from nobody from the pulpit. If I don't brought somebody to this church, if you don't see me riding with them, they ain't coming back annually or whenever you think they should be back, bishop knows something about them. And you should follow your bishop or say, you know what? They came here, hmm, 1999. I'm just using that example. Bishop ain't had them back since. I don't hear bishop even talk about them. Because most of them characters got financial deficiencies, character flaws. I'm just saying, I ain't beating nobody up, but I'm just saying, you know, you can't want to be big and little gotcha all tangled up in the figure folk. I'm just saying. So you got to keep your mind on stuff like that. I always looked at my bishop and always fall. That was a key for me when I watched my bishop back in the days. Come on him, church. Y'all keep your eyes on me now because your bishop ain't crazy. When I would see people come to my, my bishop's church in Florida and I would notice they wouldn't come back. Some would come back, some wouldn't. Then then I kind of started studying why the ones didn't come back, maybe conversations. There is time about this. They just open up to us about things. But I've learned, even as a man of God, sometimes why people don't come back. You got it? And then you got to keep your eyes on that because sometimes people try to wean and pull people from the congregation to follow them, right? And you don't see your bishop following them. or you. I'm just saying, man, because you got to watch people. People people, something. People something. Keep your eyes on your man of God. Keep your eyes on your woman of God. Seriously. That's not, you know, God knows. Y'all know Bishop Jerome A. Taylor is not a jealous man. I want you to glean from people in this life. I'm not the only great teacher, amen? I'm not. I, there's a lot of great prophetic, there's a lot of great prolific preachers, teachers of the gospel, and I want you to glean. I want you to, you know, look at Dr. Vernon's and the Bishop Jakes and, you know, pull from, pull. I mean, pull from people that got credibility, whatever. My bishop, Archbishop Leonard, come on now. Pull from those that got credibility. You can learn and glean. I ain't got no problem with you watching nobody else. You know what I mean? That'd be crazy for me to be upset you watching somebody else and you getting better. No, you need to watch good people and develop. But I'm just saying, 
most of these people th that we've had, some people that we had, like I said, I call it, they, and they got carried, they got, they got money issues. They got money issues. They, they got, anyway, they got money issues. I'm just saying. And that's something that you can, you can be, you can be godly proud of at your church. Come on now. That your bishop wasn't around here doing fraudulent stuff. Come on now. That we told you the money for the church when we was going to pay this sucker off got paid off. When every chair showed up, every door showed up, every cone showed up. Come on now. Every monitor, light bulb showed up, and it's here still. What we said what we were going to do, come on now, it's here. And that, that's, that's, all, that's my character. Parking lot paid off, come on now, paid in full. Got the guy, matter of fact, got a conversation with the man who's supposed to come back this week and finish it. We want to definitely put that on uh, Facebook so you can see the stripes of the new area. Supposed to come do that Saturday, praise God. And guess what we did? We held a portion of his money back. It's paid off, but it's sitting in the bank. So he wasn't going to get that last portion. Come on, to he... Finish striping it. Got it about twelve hundred dollars. Got to finish striping it. And but my point is, you all raised that eighty something thousand dollars. We did that together. Praise God. Come on now. And and and, and I'm not telling you, oh y'all, we owe no, we owe nobody nothing but to love them. That's my my. I want to always show you development and integrity in that area. That's important to me, because if you talk about plan, come on, pastor. You talk about uh, trying to lead a congregation. People want to see first of all. They don't want to see the development problem in the church. They want to see how you treat your wife. Some of you mean and nasty don't treat your wife right. Some of you got boyfriends and girlfriends in the church. Come on now. Some of you dating women in the church, babies in the church from other women. Screwing some of the members. I'm just saying. The Bible says, come on now. I, I mean, come on. How, how are you going to be a pastor and you having relationships with your spiritual daughters in the church? And you got a wife, a whole wife, nothing but a wife, so help me God. But you got members in the church that you forn not fornicate, you committing adultery with or fornicate, whatever case. That ain't right. That ain't God. Come on now. I don't care if you married or single, whatever the case may be. You got to hold your course. I'm just saying, now as a man of God or a woman of God, we can't, we can't, we can't be behind this pulpit plan. We can't, we can't be in this place and not develop as a man or woman of God. We can't be in the church, come on, saints of God, and not develop. You can't say you in the church, but you out smoking reefer, uh, 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 other clubs, in the strip clubs, topless clubs, on the poles, doing all kind of fraudulent stuff on your off time. Like, like this is a weekend thing where you come and get dressed up for the Lord. Then through the weekday, you want to act uh, raggedy. You want to have a raggedy life. No, your life needs to be fully developed where Christ, come on, the hope of glory, shines his light all through you through the week. And then the weekend doesn't give you a, a license to sin. Or to be off from your duty as a Christian. Or to do some fraudulent stuff. Come on now. Hit the share button. Yeah, you got to be fully developed, fully committed to this thing. Is Christ in you the hope of glory? Are you fully developed? Is your character right? Why are you cussing people out sometimes and sometimes you praise the Lord? Can salt and fresh water come from the same fountain? Can fresh water and salt water come from the same fountain? You got to be into this thing for real. For God I live, for God I die. And people don't want to see this, this, this on and off person you know what i mean you either win it or not <clears throat> you going outside on a on the um on the break you smoke a cigarette harder than the center man well bishop cigarettes don't sing you to hell you're right you might go you might go to heaven smelling like smoke and i wouldn't take too many chances with that <clears throat> you might get to heaven a little earlier smelling just like smoke and i wouldn't go in god's face smelling like smoke i'm just saying why you want to smell like hell anyway i'm just saying somebody say Cigarette in one hand, or say, say, uh, uh, say a fire on one end and a fool on the other end. I'm just saying, I ain't calling you no fool. I'm just saying, you got fire on one end and somebody else on the other end, puffing it up. I'm just saying, man, is it really, is it really that deep? I'm just saying, liquor. Some of you, I, I'm gonna get my drink. I like my rose. Well, have your rose. Have your liquor. Drink up. Drink up. I ain't mad at you. You know what I mean? Well, the Bible, the, the, the little wine, good for the stomach. Come on, you you know better. You come on. So you think Jesus created some 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 alcoholic wine when he made that 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 that? You know there is what's called non-alcoholic wine, right? And you can drink all you want, not get drunk. I'm just saying, some of you want an excuse to do what you want to do, get drunk. Some of you want to get tied up and act a fool. I'm just saying, come on now. We see there's there's some development. You still you still a Christian? You a Christian, you still going to the club? For real? You still in the club? You still have a desire to go to the topless bar as a Christian? You still want to smoke marijuana as a Christian? For real? You still want to have, 
Come on, illegal sex, for real? I mean, come on, our bodies get crazy, single people, y'all know what I'm saying? Your bodies go wild. I understand that. But you really want to go out and connect with a whole other human being and exchange body fluids and all that, and you ain't right. I'm just saying. Hello, everybody. Come on. I'm just saying. You, 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 you know, come on. I mean, you know, uh, life, is, life takes maintenance. It, it really does. I mean, it's like, I know it's crazy. As a single person, it's crazy. Even as married people. It'd be like, married people don't want to have sex. Married people don't want to hook up. I mean, that's, that's even, that's bizarre to me. You got two whole married people don't want to hook up. What's really going on? <laughs> come on now. Come on. Hit the share. Oh, don't get mad at me. Hit the share button. I'm almost done. I'm just saying. You got to want to develop you. You a daddy, and you don't want to take your child and spend no time with that baby. You don't have three or four head of kids, and you ain't trying to spend no time with none of them. Something wrong, sir. Come on, ma'am. Ma'am, you are a mother and don't want to be with your babies. Don't want to spend no time. Y'all, he, you and the daddy. Y'all, you get them this week. You, y'all, you know, ping pong the child. You may not be together, but you're ping pong the child like they some, like they're a, a, a silver ball or, a, you know, like the silver ball in the pin, the pin, uh, they'll call it a pinball machine. Yeah, yeah. Child, this, this is big. This is thrown all over the place. Ping, 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 ping. You know what I mean? Child is all over the place, like the ping ball. You know what I mean? Just all over the place because you don't want to stand up and be a mother or you don't want to stand up, sir, and be a father. And the children didn't ask for none of this mess. You and him got together, he the meat, and here the child are here. Now everybody played house, but nobody don't want to have a house now. Ooh. Hit the share button, everybody. I think I done made some people mad this morning. That's okay though. I want you to be, I want you to get, I want you to get yourself together, boo-boo. Sir, ma'am, you got to get yourself together. This year got to be different. All of the childhood excuses, some of you brothers, she got me on child support. I ain't doing that next for the child. Hush, handle your business. Hush and handle your business. I know, I know it is what it is. But bitch, you don't know what she's trying to do to me. You you got entangled. You should you should have you should have known better. You you know what I mean? You you thought with the wrong head, praise God. You've been thinking up here. <laughs> you should have been thinking with this one. I'm just saying. Now you want to blame her and everybody else? Take care of them babies. Now you're alimony, child support, and all that. Take care of them babies. You ain't want to stick with her to help raise them. Stick, pay, pay your money then. And, and, and let, let, the, let the government tell you that you got to pay child support or go to jail. I'm just saying. Moms, you can't go out to the club, get your fingernails done. The man sending the money to get, get, take care of the babies now. You can't, can't be doing all that stuff you want to do. You got to take care of them babies with that money. I'm just saying. Hit the share button, everybody. I, I'm, I'm about to go off the air. But you got to want to develop you this year. You got to quit these little childish excuses. You got to quit these little childish excuses and grow up. Come on and let God develop you. You got to let him develop the inside of you. You got to want him to develop the inside of you so the outside of you can shine. It's time out for these little kids. Kids play games. You know what I mean? Tricks are for kids. And these Xboxes, grown men. I mean, it is. We have a gamer world. Gamer you know, people, you know, there, there's a gamer society. I ain't mad at those that game a lot, but some of you play too many games. Some of you play too many games, and you, you'll never get to the place where God really can trust you with things because you don't want to develop into a man or to a woman. Or let's go beyond the man or woman. You don't want to develop into a God man or a God woman. That's the best place, developing where you are trusted by everyone around you and even by your peers and also by your children and those that love you. Hey, guess what, y'all? I am slapped out of time. I know some of you happy I'm, I'm stopping, right? Said, Bessie, you done stepped on my toes, bunions, heels. Man, hey, look, it, I, I love you, and I want you to be developed. I do. I don't want the devil to keep eating your lunch. You can't keep giving us these little excuses for your life. You can't keep, come on, giving us these little childish kickstand excuse. I call them kickstand because you know what a kickstand a wind come by and I blow that thing down. You know anything on a kickstand like a bicycle? It's not that stable. It's temporary. The kickstand is a temporary place for the bike to stand up. It ain't permanent. Because a good wind can blow it down. And some of you give those old kickstand excuses. And a good wind of life can blow that thing right on down. You got to stand up and rise up. Come on now. You got to rise up and, 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 and not be a liability. Because liability basically says you lied about your abilities. You told everybody you're going to be a good man. You told that people's, that girl family that you're going to take care of her and all that. And you told that man's 
family, that you're going to be a good wife, and all. you told everybody you're going to be a good, you know, you went to that job, so I'm going to be good, I'm going to be a good person. You lie, you just keep lying. And I, yes, I'm going to pay my bills. Went to the car dealership, yes, I'm going to pay my bills. Down. And you can't, come on, get the bills, you running, and you three and four months behind, about to get kicked out your house. You got to quit running, you got you to quit being irresponsible. Because, you know, the same patterns keep coming every year around the same time, and you keep repeating the same thing. So what's the common denominator? You are. You have a problem with developing. And you got, like I say, you go, you've been having money management issues how many years now? Okay, so it ain't the money, it's you. You got to manage, you got you to gotta get yourself together, boo-boo. Quit running from the stuff and develop and quit playing games and, and do what you got to do. Well, it's hard because the, they be saying it's a sale, and I just get addicted to stay at the malls. <laughs> In the mall will make you small, all right? And it sure will have all your money. I'm just saying, you stay at the mall. Got it? Anyway, come on. It's okay, y'all. I love you. Come on, bow your head. I know. We're going to try to end happy here with salvation. Somebody needs to get saved and just repent. But somebody's ambition has been all over the place with this money, and I'm really stirred. Now, I want you to be stirred up to do the right thing. God's ready to bless you. Come on, bow your heads with me. I, I appreciate you all for, for staying with me. Come on, don't, don't get off the air. Come on, I just need somebody to repent of their sins and give their lives to Christ. Come on, say, dear God in heaven, I thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. I thank you for dying for my sins. Father, I yearn to change. I yearn to be a better person. I ask you, Father, to forgive me of all my sins. One by one, I ask you to forgive me. I want to become that better man. I want to become that better woman, a better person for my generation, for my family, for those that are dependent on me, for my job, for my community, for the society. So I repent of my sins. Father, you said in your word that if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead, that I would be saved. Father, I speak salvation unto my life. I am saved right now because of Romans 10 and 9. I thank you, Father, for giving me a new opportunity to become a better person. Help me to develop. Help me to become strong. and Help me to be all that you called me to be. And help me to stay on that path as we stated, point number eight, I want to stay committed. I don't, I don't want to just make a commitment, but I want to stay committed to the process of becoming a better me. Help me to come out of debt. Help me to make money. Help me to manage it. And help me to multiply it. Help me to be an awesome entrepreneur. Help me to send people from the north, south, east, and west my way. Help me, God, in all areas of my life to be a better person. And I'll give you the praise, the glory, and all the honor. In Jesus' name, come on, I need about five people to shout amen. If you said that prayer, welcome to the kingdom of God. I know this was a hard lesson. I know I know, I said some stuff, but I'm telling you what, congratulations. Welcome to the kingdom of God. You're part of the best spiritual family in the whole wide world. The kingdom of God, man, is one of the best places. God's going to develop you. I'm not talking about just something I read out of book. I'm talking about my whole life experience. I had, you know, those things that I know how it is with everything I'm sharing. I had to walk through that and become the man that I am today, and I am still working on areas to make sure that my life is tight, that my name is good. Come on, everybody, developing me. Look at me in the mirror saying, you are the man in the mirror, but you're going to get better. In areas where you need to repent and get it right with people, you do it. Come on now. You do that thing, you make it right because that's what men and women do. All right. So look, everybody, thank you again for being a part, amen, of this telecast. Again, my hymn church members, thank you all for Returning your tithes and offers. I see you're giving. Come on, your giving looks good. Keep giving strong, hard. I appreciate you all being so committed to the process of, of tithing and giving offers to the church, even though we're not physically here. Thank you again. If some of you need your, your uh, reports, of course, your previous giving for the previous year, please hit up the, the church media there. It should be the address or uh, Gmail at the bottom of the screen uh, so we can get your uh, information mailed to you or email to you. They want to make sure you get your for your taxes. So some of you need your uh, returns or what you gave throughout the year for your tax return. We definitely want to get that to you. Our media, de our media department, our finance department want to make sure that you get that information, all right? But we want to make sure that because you gave, and of course we want to make sure you get that so you can file your taxes and do what you need to do. Praise God. Hey, Hemp Church, keep your eyes on what we're going to be doing. Uh, our church anniversary actually is next week. Praise God. But we'll let you know I'm going to have a Zoom call and reach out to some of you. I may do something special 
on Facebook. I don't know, man, but we're not going to sweat him. not going to worry about it. We're turning 22 years of age, y'all. Come on, praise God. 22 years of age as a church that we've been in the community making the impact. So we appreciate you sticking with your hymn church. We got great things to do. We're not going to sweat it. We're paid in full. Thank you again for that, making that a possibility. We don't have to sweat. Sit back and stay safe. Keep your mask on. Keep loving the Lord and keep doing what God has called you to do, okay? All right, so I love you all. Until the next week, till next time, stay tuned in. Same channel. Come on, same YouTube channel. Come on, remember these words from Acts chapter 17 and verse number 28. For in him we live and move and have our being. And by the way, come on, y'all, it's all about him.